dropped Nico off at school and Clayton was like, I'm gonna stay home with Remy. Why don't you just like go to a cafe, journal, read, do whatever you need to do. Uh, and it felt so good because I feel like I'm still kind of resetting from our weekend. We were in London from Wednesday till Sunday last week. And I actually brought my vlog camera. I was like, oh, I'll vlog this, like a cute family trip to London with the kids. Um, I didn't even take one video because it was so chaotic. We were actually there for a work trip for Clayton. So he runs a menswear newsletter called Spreza and he was hosting a pop-up shop. He did this in New York last year. He did this one in Shoreditch and over 700 people came through. It was amazing. It was very cool. Um, but that just meant that I had a lot more time holding down the fort with the kids in Shoreditch, which if you've been, it's just like a very busy, urban, cool part of London, but just like not the most kid friendly. So it was fun. It was worth the memories, but I was wiped by the time that we got back. We were staying in the middle of Shoreditch and like on the second floor of this apartment. So we had to keep a double stroller downstairs in like the tiny foyer area. So on my own, I'm trying to like carry Remy down, who he's big and he's heavy. Make sure Nico doesn't like run away, carry the diaper bag. And then you're like holding Remy and trying to get the double stroller out the door, but sideways, cause it doesn't fit front ways onto like the busy street, get both kids into the stroller and then walk like a mile to the event to stop by and say hi, or to like the one playground that was within, you know, a 15 minute walk. So, you know, it was a lot. And it definitely didn't vlog it, but we got to see some family because my sister-in-law and brother-in-law, they live in Charleston. They came in town for the event and it was so fun to see them. And we did find an amazing babysitter that helped a little bit, like one after two afternoons and then one evening, we got to actually go out for dinner, which was really nice because I feel like it's the first time where I'm in a season where I'm like, oh, like both my kids sleep in their own beds at night, like pretty reliably. Remy did wake up a little bit, but the babysitter was able to get him back down. Um, and that was just like a huge relief because when you're in the middle of sleep with your kids not being very predictable at nighttime, you're like, I'm just never gonna be able to go out again. Um, so that was really nice to have like a brand new babysitter be able to watch our kids at night. Anyway, we got home Sunday. It is now Wednesday. <laughs> I've been catching up on work and just trying to do little things to reset. Um, one of those things looked like Monday morning, I booked a yin yoga and aromatherapy class. So something I've learned with myself is if I'm gonna like pay for a class and spend like an hour there, I used to feel like it really needed to be like the most productive where like I feel sore the next day. And now I'm learning like how much product productivity there is in rest and very intentional rest. And like, I cannot get those benefits by just like taking a nap at home. The yin yoga is so, it was so beneficial for me. It was a lot of like deep opening. If you don't know yin yoga, it's holding a pose, like a stretch for like three minutes. And it just released so much in me. It brought up some emotions because you can hold a lot of emotions in your hips. And as I was doing like these hip openers, I was like crying in a good way. It just was like helping kind of like cleanse stuff out. And then the aromatherapy part, she took like oil and she would like throughout the class, just like rub it into your hand. So then you could go like this and like breathe in this like rose and sandalwood scent, which when you add in like the element of aroma with the stretching and she just had the best vibe, it was so good. Like it was just very cleansing. Like I was just like releasing a lot of stress. And also it's not even just the trip. I just feel like in general, like the changing of seasons and then my birthday recently, and it's been two months since we moved to like another country and I had a baby this year. There's just been like a lot of, kind of like spiritual themes coming up in my life lately and I know myself well enough now to really pay attention to those themes and write them down and start kind of putting together this picture of like okay I feel like something's a brewing like things are changing which is exciting it's also like a little nerve-wracking um but I feel really happy and at peace with my life in general that I think these like changes or these like big feelings coming up don't scare me as much as maybe they used to because I do feel grounded and good about where I'm at in general in life. Knock on wood. Um, okay, what else happened? Yesterday I did actually go back to weight training because that's something that I want to do routinely, but I wanted to just give myself a beat after the trip to like really recover before I got back into that. And during weightlifting, I listened to a podcast episode. It's like the To Be Magnetic podcast. A friend here recently told me that she has their app and she does like their meditations. Um, it's a lot of like aura cleansing. I don't even know how to describe it that well, but I'm really interested by it. 
And so the podcast episode was so on the nose, like exactly what I have been like kind of wrestling with recently. So then on the walk home, I downloaded the app and they give you this like free uh, meditation to try before you like sign up for the year. So it's like cleansing your aura meditation. And I was like, okay, I'll download that. And as I got home, I was like, you know what? I also just feel like I need to talk to someone, a healer about kind of like these themes that are coming up lately. Like I just need some external perspective and guidance because I feel like there's something here. So I looked at my favorite meditation studio here in Amsterdam that I love going to their classes. They have like hypnosis classes and meditation. They're so great. And I remember that they had one-on-one -on -one sessions. So I looked it up and they just so happened to have like this afternoon, um, an energy reading and healing session. And I was like, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Perfect. Booked. So excited for that. And then it was interesting that then last night I'm doing this like aura cleansing meditation with Clayton as we're falling asleep. And they ask you to like visualize the color and I immediately was washed over with this like very intense cobalt blue. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Like, I know that that's connected to your throat chakra. It's like all your chakras like go down your like spine. It starts at, like the root of your spine and up. And it's like the colors of the rainbow. So it starts like red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And each chakra is connected to like a different thing. Like uh, this violet chakra is connected to like your connection to like a higher power. Throat chakra, as you can imagine, is connected to like your voice, being able to speak. Your root chakra is connected to feeling grounded. So I was like, okay, that's interesting to know. Something's coming up in my throat. We'll see if that comes up in my session um, today. And then I had a dream that night and I've had this dream once before, like a couple of weeks ago. And it's also very connected to like the throat, um, which was very interesting. And I journaled about it a bit this morning. Maybe I'll share more later, depending on how my energy session goes. But I'm just like starting to kind of put these like things together and I don't know, it's really fun. I love this kind of stuff. It's uncomfortable. Like it, it's not just like happy, fun feelings. Like it definitely is bringing up some uncomfortability but it's a little bit exciting because I'm like, oh, at least I'm getting signals. At least something's happening. Like I'm feeling like my subconscious, the universe is pushing me towards learning something, maybe trying something new. And I just really like that. Anyway, I'm going to do some work. We have a babysitter coming over to help with Remy because I knew I was going to need a little bit of extra help this week just to get caught up on things since I was so busy last week with the kids. Um, and then we'll go to my energy session. I have no idea what this vlog is going to hold. I think I'm just gonna take you through, um, just kind of like catching up and resetting this week.
I feel like this week has been like the best reset. It's been busy and very productive, but like just getting things in order. I feel like there were so many little things on my list. Like yesterday we went to the phone store and I finally got my Dutch phone number. So I'm finally like switching those things over, scheduled things for the month of November. We have so much coming up. I think between now and February, almost every single week maybe every other week there is some sort of holiday or celebration let me walk you through it because it's actually kind of fun it's a mix of like dutch holidays american holidays birthdays anniversaries and i think i'll document some of them in the vlogs coming up because it's been really fun to like learn about these new traditions okay so we have halloween next week and clayton and i our eight year anniversary is next week then we have November 11th, there's a holiday in the Netherlands, which I need to learn more about, but like the kids make these lanterns and they go to door to door and they like sing a song. So it sounds really cute. Then Santa Claus is coming to town. So Santa Claus is like, he's kind of like St. Nicholas. He's kind of like Santa Claus, but his name is Santa. He comes from Spain, like on a boat with his helpers and he comes to town in November, and I think there's like parades and celebrations, but then Santa Claus, like the actual day, is early December when it's kind of like Christmas Day where your kids like leave their shoes by the fireplace and then his helpers come down the chimney and leave little presents in it and then like you're eating dinner and you hear a knock on the door and then you open it and there's like a bag of presents from Santa Claus. So we have like two Christmases that we have to prepare for in December, so like lots of presents happening. Then we also have, we'll still be celebrating Thanksgiving, of course, from here, which will be really fun. There's Clayton's birthday as well, and then actual proper Christmas. And then in January and February, we have Remy's birthday and Nico's birthday. So I'm thinking through any things that they need, which to be honest, like we kind of do need a bit of a toy update because we didn't like bring a lot of toys from the States and like they're getting older and we've bought a couple of toys, but I feel like we're at the place where I'm like, okay, it's winter. We're going to play inside more. There are some toys I'd like to get like for their room. They'll be like nice to play with. I have to like spread it out. I'm like, okay, is this from Santa Claus, Santa Claus, birthday, <laughs> like which one's it gonna be? But I'm also really excited because every time we go into a store, there's just like so many different decorations and I'm like learning all the different things. This morning we were playing different Santa Claus songs to like start practicing because you have to like have, learn all these songs in Dutch that you sing as you like prepare for Santa Claus to come. And we're gonna have one of our Dutch friends over next week and grill him with questions and be like, okay, like let's make sure we're doing this right. Like I think you need to put a carrot in the shoe for Santa Claus's horses and then you're supposed to like write a letter and then you're supposed to have like a chocolate letter and just making sure we have it all right because I wanna stay here long-term. Like I want us to be here for a while forever actually is what I tell Clayton, but we'll see. So I'm like, we need to learn these things so that we can really fully embrace the Dutch experience. Speaking of Dutch, uh, Nico's starting to like kind of 
speak Dutch randomly here and there. I mean, it's very minimal. He only goes to his school two days a week and they speak Dutch there. And like his Dutch, his babysitters are Dutch. Like they can speak Dutch as well. And so like sometimes they'll say a word here and there, but it's not like full submersion. So I'm kind of surprised that he's already saying things. Like I was changing his diaper and I was like, I don't know. I was just like, oh, did you know like in London, cause we were just in London, they call diapers nappies. And I was like, I don't know what they call it in Dutch though. And then he said the word, like without skipping a beat, he said that it was like lauer or something. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? He said, that's how you say diaper in Dutch. The kid's two and a half. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I like Googled on my phone. I'm like, how do you say diaper in Dutch? He was correct. And I was like, okay, Nico. <laughs> so I started asking him more questions. I was like, okay, like, what did they say before you go to bed? Like, how did they say goodnight? And he said like, Vatervusten, I think is how he said, I don't, see, I don't even know. Like I have a two year old now that knows things that I don't know, which is like a very weird dynamic I've never experienced before. So then when I picked him up from school yesterday, I like, was telling his teachers and I was like, yeah, he told me like what y'all say before bed. Is this correct? I, again, I think it's like Vatavustin or something like that. They're like, yeah, that means like good night or like sleep well. And I was just like, this is nuts. Like this is going to be such an interesting experience to have a child so young that is saying things and knowing things that I don't know. I kind of like it. It's like a little bit of like a power dynamic switch, which I think is really healthy because I really like viewing my children more as people who are soon to be peers that I am just like helping them learn in life versus like I'm in charge and you're the child. And there's something about him knowing these things that actually is like really making it real where I'm like, wow, like you're, you're really your own person. I also need to learn Dutch and I need to figure that out that is still on my mental to-do list of figuring out how I want to learn Dutch more intentionally. I'm doing Duolingo on my phone. I can only do so much. I think I really need to sign up for an actual class which is also in line with like where I'm at right now. I do feel this like urge to lean in a little bit more to like hobbies and homey grounding things. I think it's just like hibernation season or something. Um, I think I'm gonna make another, am I gonna make a vlog about this? I I've been thinking a lot about like hibernation season and like all the different things that go into preparing for winter and the things that I want to do and will do to make our first winter in Amsterdam, which is a bit intense. Like when you're biking outside, it's very dark, it's very rainy. Um, how I want to like spiritually, emotionally, energetically prepare for that. So if you want more content about that, I could make like a TikTok or a YouTube video kind of talking about all the things that are going into that. Anyway, um, I feel like learning another language really kind of like feeds into that. Like the idea of learning, using my brain and taking a class for something that's not to make money. I feel like I do that in the context of work. And I think it'd be really nice to like work on something that's not to make money and like promote capitalism and just be for the sake of learning. That sounds really refreshing right now. So I was talking to someone about this and I was like, I want learning a new language, at least for right now, to feel less like a chore and more like, this really beautiful hobby and opportunity. So we'll see how long that le how long that energy lasts, but that's kind of what I'm thinking and feeling. There is this nunnery outside of Amsterdam that people have told me about that you can go like live there for a week or 10 days or something. And they say, if you do that, that you will literally leave speaking Dutch, which sounds too good to be true, um, but very tempting. The problem is like when you have children, I'm not leaving them for a week or two weeks um, to go live in a nunnery. <laughs> So I don't know if I could like go part-time or something, if I want like a tutor in person, a sit-down class, we'll see. I believe my intuition will lead the way. I'm feeling very into that, which reminds me that we didn't talk about my energy session that I went to the other day. I think I we chatted right before I went. So I met with this energy healer and it just happened like so organically. I just like went to this yin yoga class with aromatherapy. I was doing hip openers, I started crying. I started feeling like, ooh, I just needed like a little outside perspective from someone very spiritual and wise. I looked up Oracle's one-on-one -on -one classes. Oracle I've been going to just for like their meditation, hypnosis classes. If you're ever in Amsterdam, I'm obsessed with their classes. They're just so delicious. And I remember them saying that they have one-on-one -on -one classes. So I was like, okay, I'll look it up. This lady happened to have availability like literally the next day. I was like, perfect, walked in. Her energy, she's just like this older woman that just stared straight into my soul. And I was like, yep, I was supposed to meet you. So 
So she's just like really looking into me as I'm talking and I come in like Ch -ch -ch -ch. I mean you see like I am just always like Ch -ch -ch -ch, talking really fast I'm thinking really fast energy is like up here she brought the energy down 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 and then by the end of it like an hour of talking I was like there with her and I was like shoot I would like to stay here like how do I stay here more we talked about so many things. Um, not gonna get into the details of it, but it was just like like a dream that I had had the night before. It seemed very symbolic and I was telling her and I was telling her like what I thought it might mean and she was like, mm -mm. She said, it reminds me of the Hanging Man tarot card. And I was like, huh? And she started explaining it. I'm not even gonna get into it. It's so much, but it's so good. It's so good. It was just like she was explaining the symbolism of this tarot card and it was literally the symbolism in my dream. And it was a very much around when you let yourself relax and be at ease, your mind thinks it's literally dying. So you panic. But if you can just push through that, it's actually bliss and this connection to like your higher self and your connection to spirituality in a way that is like so refreshing and beautiful. But you have to like be okay with your mind feeling like it's dying as you're going through that. And I'm being so called into that. I think I've been talking about this a bit in my past few vlogs of like, at least for this season, I feel really called into a space of like more rest and seeing what comes out of that, like what learning and connection comes out of it. So it was just so in line with so many things. And she really reminded me the importance of daily, like cleansing my aura and my energy. And so this can be done through meditation. And I think the past two months, especially just with the move, I, everything has been so chaotic. There just has not been as much space for me to like be with myself. And so it was just a really good reminder as things were entering into the season where I feel like I can create more space. And she was like, just feel, like put your hands on your heart and literally just breathing and feeling the energy going straight into your heart. And then imagine the energy like sinking through like the soles of your feet. She said literally just that, like silence, closing your eyes, feeling the energy here in your feet, three minutes. She's like, just start with that every morning. And I was like, am I supposed to be like visualizing something? Like am I supposed to be doing it? She was like, no no mind like you don't need to be doing you don't need to be listening to anything just be and like the energy will will do its own thing like things will come up and just like be with yourself and that just like doesn't happen as much especially when you're like a mom to two young kids and you're working and you're always just like engaged and to just be with yourself and see yourself and see the emotions that come up that feel like maybe they're good or bad, like having no judgment on the emotions and just being with them, not having to bring them into your brain and be like, oh, well, the reason I feel this way is because of this and here's what I should do with it. And I shouldn't feel this way, I should feel this way. Just like seeing it and being with it. And that has been like so helpful for me even this week, even when I don't like close my eyes and physically put my hands like this. Sometimes I've been with the kids since that session and I just feel my energy, I'm like, bring it from up here down. Like just visualizing the energy going down and sinking through the soles of my feet has been like a really helpful visual just for like a split second throughout my days. And I think my kids feel my energy so much too. And when you're able to like ground your own, they are just like, I mean, I feel like they're part of me still. Where like my nervous system feels like it's still just entwined with theirs. And when mine lowers down, I feel theirs too. And we can have this like beautiful, more grounded connection. So that's like been my visual lately is like ch -ch 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 -ch. this. <laughs> to go down. So that was really like, lovely. Clayton's about to be home with Nico. We're gonna go on a little walk and Remy's about to wake up from his nap. And I don't know what the day's gonna hold, but I'm hoping I have time to read my Kindle. I'm getting back into reading. And um, we're gonna have some friends over tonight after the kids go to bed. And then tomorrow is Nico's Halloween party that we get to go to. So he's gonna really, really love that. And I'm very excited. Whoa. That boat's a little too tall, so they, so they have to lift the bridge up. Hi, I am walking to one of my favorite cafes to read a book, listen to a podcast on the way. I have my Kindle and my fanny pack. The weather is 
so perfect. Like we are beyond lucky that our first fall in Amsterdam, the weather is impeccable. Like it is end of October, so sunny, honestly so warm. I don't even need a sweater. So I'm just so excited to cozy up and read my book. Nico's napping and Clayton was like, I'll hang out with Remy. Why don't you go read a book and get a little treat? So that's what we're gonna do.